Don't crowd you. Uh, what a special night to be back here in Gordyville. Uh, coaches versus cancer. Uh, with, with this group of, uh, of guys is, is beyond spectacular. Uh, we've got uh, Greg Campy, uh, the longest tenured Division I head coach in the country. This year's darling of the NCAA tournament. One or all of our fans know, as we barely beat them, and we knew at that time how good that team was going to be, but uh, uh, beating Kentucky uh, and, and, and moving on, what a great season. The other guy was is one that everybody will get to, to love to boo tonight when they start. They booed him for, for many years. One of the great officials uh, in college basketball, Bo Borowski. Uh, Bo is a Big Ten official, a Final Four official, a tremendous human being. I've gotten to know him very well, so we're excited to have him. <coughs> Excuse me. And the next gentleman everybody knows, Bill Raftery. Uh, I've gotten to know Bill uh, from way back. Uh, the gentleman I work for, Jim Kerwin at Western Illinois, grew up with Bill. Bill is the voice of college basketball, uh, done many, many championship games, many NCAA tournaments. He said he went back to 1981. A great, great player in his own right, a great coach, and obviously a legend as a commentator. So we're excited to have this, this group of guys here, a diverse group, but one that is, is all in support of Coaches versus Cancer. They're excited to be here, and, and we couldn't be more excited to let uh, the people of Champaign-Urbana and the great Illinois fan base get to know this group. Greg, why did you want to be a part of this event? Well, this is one of my, you know, uh, charities uh, we we do a lot at back in Detroit for it I have an event myself and so we all kind of just help each other out so when Brad called and said would you come I didn't even know what was going on I just said of course I'll be there because we that's what we're supposed to do what is it about Brad what's your relationship like with Brad coming here for a game out see and then doing this event? well when he brought up coach Kerr when I go back to those days uh, you know when Oakland first went Division One. We were in the same league with Western Illinois when he was an assistant there. And then Huggins, you know, he's a Huggins and, and Frank Martin guy. And I've known those two guys forever. And it's just, be, you, you bond, you know, you bond. And we take care of each other, as I said earlier. And, uh, you know, Brad is just a tremendous person. I, you guys all know him as a great basketball coach. But as a person, there aren't many people better than he is. So when he calls, I come no matter what. What do you make of the portal and what it's doing? I'm not a fan of it, but it is what it is, right? And I don't want to end up being the grand, the old grandfather that that you know, this crusty old guy that bitches about everything, right? I I don't want to be known as that guy. So we got to adapt to it. My best player, you know, I mean, I think my team, as many of you saw, is as good as anybody in the country, right? But my best player is in the portal, and he's not going to come back to me. So that. Uh, we could add another year like that. Now it's my job to go find somebody that can, you know, help us the way that young man helped us. And that's not an easy thing to do, but this is what it is today. So you adapt or die, and, and I don't want to die. I, I want to stay part of this. So. I think Josh only had two buckets here. What was it about Terrence Shannon and Illinois that... Well, so we opened at Ohio State, and uh, Golke had made six threes in that game. We came here and, and, you know, Brad had told me that he thought Shannon was the best two-way player in the country. And when I walked off the floor that night, I agreed with him because he shut Golke down. And I kind of laughed uh, with Golke in the locker room. I said, that's what you get for making six threes at Ohio State. You're going to see this all year. Uh, he got better at it and uh, better on how to get open with a guy like that guarding him. And obviously, in the NCAA tournament, he made, what, 17 threes in the two games. So he figured it out. What would that run mean to you? Well, it's, it's really hard as a coach right now because what was our greatest moment beating Kentucky turned into, you know, we were one possession away from the Sweet 16, and, and that team went to the Final Four. And they beat everybody pretty badly except us in overtime, right? And we didn't get a shot off, so I blame myself for that. So it's, I still wake up every night thinking what would have happened if we would have got a shot. You know, if Townsend would have got one more shot or Golke would have got one more shot, we, we might have had a chance to go to the Final Four, and you don't get that chance at Oakland very often. So it's bittersweet, but as time goes on, 
you know, that when you beat the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball, that's a pretty big thing. What's allowed you to have you know, so much tenure at Oakland and allow you to, to feel comfortable and allow your family to feel comfortable? Well, I, I'm probably a little different than most coaches. I, I kind of just happy for what I got, job I had and not very confrontational as a person. I just kind of do my job and try and get out of everybody's way. And, and I, you know, five years became 10 and then 10 became 20. And then, you know, it's at 40 years now. And I, I, one of the things I think I'm proud of is I don't have any enemies or any, I don't think there's a coach out in this profession that I can't call a friend. And that's always been one of my goals. And so, you know, I, I've just enjoyed what I have. There's a, there's a song, you know, it says, uh, I can't think of her name now, but uh, it's not wanting, it's, it's not getting what you want, it's wanting what you've got. You know the, the, I can't think of her name now, but anyways, famous singer. And I've always gone by that lyric, you know, and, 